it's a real regime almost. Oh, hell no. They're talking about me. All I needed was one ball. The science of training. And I know you don't think it's a sport. You know, I worked with uh, Phil Heath. Uh, we did a little bit going into that show. He kind of advised me. You friends with like, him, right? You friends with Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So he he flew in, and um, you know, he was kind of putting me through the rounds of posing, and he said, "Well, you know, do this, do that." And uh, so a lot of the things he taught me worked, which was new information for me. So now we're just kind of plugging that into this prep uh, to see about getting the same or improved result. Because I was happy with California. I, that was the first show I actually felt full on stage and um and and it showed because i had striations in my quads i had striations in my chest um you know everything was in you know so i, I was really happy with that showing so hopefully um uh, we'll nail it like 2019 uh just with the additional size at the olympia this year and then there's a show uh, that's in italy the uh, yamamoto cup i uh, potentially may think about doing that show uh, of course you know pending how the olympia goes uh, we're placing there. Phil Heath is obviously one of the best bodybuilders of, of all time. You know, uh, yeah. Can you share some advice that that he gave you? You know, in you know to succeed in bodybuilding, I guess both you know strategically and also I guess you know what to improve. You know, what I mean, like what, what kind of advice did you share? Did he share with you? The biggest thing that he told me um, was in line with kind of what I wanted to do already. You know, he told me to take my time, uh, and and he he actually advised me, you know, to entertain the idea of sitting out this Olympia and uh, which I, I 100% understand because, you know, he was saying, man, I want you to be successful. I want you to have the best chance to, you know, crack the top spots. Um, so, you know, he's like, you know, get to the gym, you know, train hard, eat, follow your diet in the off season, uh, because I never really did that either. Uh, so it was just, you know, he told me you, you want to be the best. You're really going to have to go to another level with your dedication. And I'm, I'm dedicated as it is. Uh, but, you know, him telling me like, hey, th this requires this. If you want that spot and you want to be a champion, you know, repetitively, you're going to have to do these things. So um, it was just really living like a bodybuilder. And he told me, you know, enjoy, enjoy the process because he said for him, it went so quick uh, that if it wasn't recorded or something, he didn't really re he didn't re really remember a lot of it because it was just he was, you know, for him, he was traveling six, seven months out of the year. At that time, he was everywhere. I mean, he had his shows. I mean, he was just doing a lot. So he just told me, well, you know, enjoy it. You know, take the small victories here and there. But just make sure you keep that goal in mind that, you know, that's that's what you want. So you're going to have to continuously put in that work year round. It's not something you can just do while you're on prep. You know, so he's he's giving me a lot, a lot of good advice, you know. I feel like people got to give Phil more praise in the sport. I mean, he, he ruled bodybuilding for seven years straight. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's and people, it's it's crazy, man. I, I'm constantly reminding people when he won in 2011, he was 232 pounds. I mean, and that physique would dominate bodybuilding today. I mean, you know, honestly, man, if you think about it, who would beat that version of him? Uh, of course, he got better and bigger, but 2011, I mean, golly, it was it was insane. I mean, so. Um, where people were quick to discount him, I don't think they, I don't think they realized like what he was, you know, and when he's, you know, re retired and he formally announces he's retired, I think people will say, man, what he did was crazy. I mean, that's, he beat a lot of really good guys and people don't realize that. I mean, I don't think people realize how good Kai Green is. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, Kai Green is, is crazy. It, crazy conditioning amount of muscle. Um, and Phil was beating him and, uh, along with a lot of other guys earlier in his career, you know, Dexter Jackson, I mean, guys that are top names and, um, you know, Phil was able to come in and, and really dominate in an area where there were a lot of really good guys. I mean, Dennis Wolf, uh, uh, you know, Victor Martinez, I'm, I know I'm leaving out a lot of guys, but Jesus, you know, think about those lineups, man. You know, that's when Jay Cutler was in. All the guys were in, and he was competing with those guys and was able to come in and uh, win in 2011 and carry that title for seven years. That's not an easy job, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy what and, he did. Yeah, man. So I, he's, he's, th that's why I looked up to him. I started the sport because of what I saw him do. And, um, you know, every time I need a reminder as to what I'm chasing, I, I'll even watch old footage of him and I'll hit him up. I'll text him. 
And I'll send him stuff, and I'm like, man, this is crazy. And he, he'll he tell me, like, yeah, I I was different back then. I, I was a different animal, you know. And it's it's so it's cool, man, having him, you know, to go to when I, I have need questions answered or, you know, whatnot. It's, it's a huge advantage.